ってらんねんなこれが Bueno, bienvenidos Veo que hay gente aquí de Erni eh, Los que no... No sé si alguno habéis venido alguna vez aquí En alguna otra mitad Esto es Erni Es una consultora suiza ¿vale? Estamos aquí Tenemos un montón de proyectos eh, Sobre todo médicos En Rocha sobre todo y bueno, es, esto es la Erni eh, Frontend Community que hacemos charlas habitualmente, ¿vale? Si estáis en el canal de Meetup lo podréis, lo podréis ver que tenemos mucha actividad. ¿no? En este caso hemos traído un compañero que se llama Max Ureda que viene de Girona que nos va a hablar sobre performance en, las, en, en la web. ¿no? Entonces, bueno, si tenéis alguna duda o queréis saber algo más sobre Erni cuando acabe la sesión, pues me preguntáis a mí y yo ya os indico cualquier duda que tengáis y... Okay, first of all, I will start talking in English. It's uh, because uh, it was requested, maybe it's in language that you know. So, if anybody has any problem, I can translate it in Spanish or Catalan. So, no problem. So, uh, first of all, thank you to Ernie to invite me to make that team meetup today. We'll talk about the website performance. Here you have my contact if you want to send me something or give me some feedback. Um, okay, first of all, Hello, my name is Mark. This is wrong, right? It seems that it's not well typed. That is the same feeling that I have while, when I see a web page that is going quite slow. So it's the same feeling that I have. So that's the reason why I'm here today, to try to explain my adventure, more or less, in that world. So let's see if it's useful for you. Um, me, I'm a full stack developer, working at Sangwe Group right now. Uh, and I, I am uh, open-minded, I'm trying to be open-minded, sometimes I'm full stack, more with the stack of T-Sharp, but uh, if uh, any good inputs are going to me, then I, I try to uh, try to understand it because it's really useful for all of us. And okay, let's talk about performance, then we'll start how everything starts, right? Um, when a project starts, Always, 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 uh, we are talking about the architecture, the APIs, the, the microservices, the cloud, the, the bobs, etc. Everything super nice, but never, never, never about uh, web performance. And after that, it's late sometimes. Or the fixes that we are applying, they are fixes are patches. So it's not okay. So let's try to prevent that. But why we need to prevent that? Why? Web performance matter. Here you have sometimes a, a link that uh, would be useful if you want to uh, learn more about the, the topics that I am saying. But it's up to you. First of all, money. The first reason is money. So if you have an improvement of uh, so many seconds on your website, you have you will have more conversions. So there is a study of really big companies that are making that. So. The first reason is money. I think it's clear. I think it's okay for all the companies, so it's a good uh, point. The second one, user experience. If people is going to your website and it's taking a lot of time to load and then bloop, something is for bobbing, then maybe it's a, a random uh, user experience if something is gradually, it's going fast, you know, the, the user maybe will come back. It is exactly the same of user engagement, so it's quite related. Eh? Uh, user engagement is that if you are, as a customer, you are going to a website when, where the images are broken, the texts are not translated, all the kind of things, probably the user will not come back. The same for the performance. If it's going slow, it's the same reason of uh, breaking images. If it takes 10 seconds to load, it's, we are losing customers. Also, something else related, bounce rate. So here is a, a chart created by Pingdom, a really big uh, enterprise that, uh, that's completely focused with web performance. That it's saying that um, the, the time that is taking your website to load and the bounce rate that it has. So it's quite related. Then another reason, back to the feature. So let me explain you a bit of history. Some time ago we had really low connections in the internet with really low powerful uh, computers. It was maybe five minutes to, to load the website. Uh, and then that internet connections were faster and the computers as well. 
So maybe some um, strategies that we were taking to make the, your site slower would disappear because the connection was better and the computer as well. Now with mobile, it is back to the future. Now we have 4G or 5G, I don't know what we have right now, but uh, not all the mobiles are okay. And also, if you check that chart, um, we have more mobile visits than desktop ones. So let's focus to mobile. Mobile it's uh, something that everyone is using. And also about the mobiles that they are using. Not all the mobiles are equal. So depending on the mobile type of mobile, the, the JavaScript, for example, processing time is quite different. So we need to take into account the kind of things. Maybe the machines are not as powerful as we thought when maybe we are focused with an iPhone uh, 10, 11, or whatever. More things to improve the web performance. SEO rating. Now Google seems to be focused with SEO rating, uh, with mobile bandwidth, with mobile devices, and also with good uh, practices that they, they are promoting. So if we are implementing the things that Google is saying, at the end, Google is the devil one, but <laughs> it's uh, providing to us the, the search engine. So if we are implementing the, the kind of things, we have more SEO rating, we have more mini points to increase in, in the SEO. So if you have uh, a good mobile performance, we will, uh, sorry, a bad mobile performance, we will have low mobile purchases. It is really bad, so let's improve it. If we have a, low, uh, a bad performance, we will lose against the competitors. So we, are not, we have not competition with them. And also, in fact, it's a, a situation that happens if the first both are happening, we are losing brand value. It's quite important for the company, so it's not only because we are developers and we, and we want to improve it. it so. And the last but not, not the least, is there, are, there is no planet B. If we are implementing something fast, for example, the, 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 the display of the devices will be less time shining. So the battery will be less wasted. Then it will be needed to recharge your battery less times. So in fact, the footprint that is making the CO2 to the atmosphere is less. It's a really a small step, but it's taken into account. We can, do, we can do something. Small, but something. OK, now I want to explain some basic concepts about performance. Uh, let's see. First of all, I would like to say that there is two types of performance, the perception one and the measurable one. I will talk about this one, the measurable one. Perception, yeah, it's when something is going slow uh, at a loader. These kind of things that UX are uh, helping to us to not show that we are going slow. It's quite interesting. Maybe another meetup can explain something uh, about the topic, but now we will go for the measurable ones, okay? First of all, waterfall is your best friend. It is the waterfall. It's something that you can see all the time with Chrome, with the, uh, the developer tool. And we can see a lot of information here. So if we are able to read that, we are able to read a lot of information here. For example, here we can see that the connection with that uh, Google Analytics, the first connection, the DNS lookup, is taking a lot of time. Or for example, we can see that the PHP that is loaded here, it's a lot of time to download it. So maybe if we are able to read that, we can improve the performance just taking a look of that. Another example, here. We have the first connection, the first uh, HTML, is taking a lot of time, the initial connection, but also it's taking a lot of time to process it, but there is no time to download. So it's quite a small, but the time in, on server is taking a lot of time. Maybe uh, backend code here or the server has something to say, yeah? Another situation. Here we have uh, 17 files that are blocking the content. So we have a lot of JavaScript here, TSS, but the images are start loaded here after the JavaScript are happening. So we are blocking the rendering of the page because we are rendering 17 files of JavaScript in a bad way, probably. And sometimes the form of the waterfall can indicate you some technologies. For example, when the, when the browser is downloading the files or the, or the, requ the request, it's making something in parallel, OK? Always. So, so in HTTP2, HTTP1, we can see something like that, bunch per bunch, more or less. But HTTP2, it's opening only one connection for all the resources, and it's loading all at the same time. So the, the figure that is shown is that one. 
So also just taking a look of the of the waterfall, we are able to decide that it's not needed to go to the developer tool and see if it's eighty two eighty two or eighty three one. Then normally, I say normally because it's not always, the back end is taking that time, that is the first connection or APIs in if there is calling an API, and the rest is front end. So if we apply the twenty the eighty twenty, make more sense to dedicate our time to improve the performance of front end. Of course, there is on a, other situations where the backend is taking a lot of time, then maybe a backend developer can take a look. Eh? But uh, if the fuel is like this one, make more sense to focus to front end. Okay, it is more or less uh, ancient technology or ancient uh, goals. This is uh, Steve Souders. Steve Souders is, uh, was working for Wiselow, uh, is, is the creator of Wiselow, who was working in Yahoo some time ago. It's one of the ancient gods. Of the web performance, okay. Right now, all the th the fourteen rules, the bold rules that he said, are obsolete, of course. But more or less, is something that makes sense, eh? so and could be still uh, usable. But of course, with new technologies, something can change. Let's take a look. Make few HTTP requests. Maybe with HTTP two, maybe it is different. Uh, use a CDN. Add the expired header. GZIP components. Put still sh still shade. On the top, put the scripts on bottom, avoid TSS expressions, make JavaScript a piece of external and different file, reduce DNS lookup, minify JavaScript, avoid redirects, remove duplicated scripts, configure tags, make a JavaScript. So, so some of them are still valid. So the reason is that more people created or adapted that rules to the new uh, scenarios or the new times, let me say. And then I can see that should be, it is really important to keep updated. Um, there is some people, that this is a list of the people that uh, signed that document, uh, that are the new gods, let me say, uh, of performance. Is the new, with the people with more knowledge about performance right now, or with most vision, probably. And they created that file, that you have here the link, if you want to download it, that they are creating every, every year the checklist of the things that should be implemented for web performance. Some of them are more or less similar than the Steve Stouder state, but of course adapted to the new times. Huh? Okay, something else interesting, page timers. This is the loading journey, how a customer uh, can see the website when it's loading, okay? First of all, the notification begins, everything is blank. Then, first pane, something appears in my screen. Okay, nice. Then, first content appears in my screen. It's uh, maybe here you cannot see, but it's a small loader, okay? Then, some meaning painful is happening. So, something with some meaning, it's appearing on my website. Then, visual is ready. All the mini things are ready. Here, I can click the things. So, it's happening something with my JavaScript or CSS. When I click, something is happening. And finally, fully load. Uh, fully load. It is translated to that. <laughs> it is more or less the technical style, uh, style in, in the waterfall, let me say. It's less complicated, but at the end, is when the DOM is interactive, when the DOM content has been downloaded, when the, the room uh, first pane is happening, when the start rendering is happening, when the document complete and unload. Okay? So there is a tool called WebPage Test that it's creating the lines to identify when everything is happening. So and also it's creating a video like the, the video that you saw, you saw before, where you can see when everything every step is happening. So it's really useful. Then resources faces. We talk about the, the waterfall, but each resource has his own logic. First of all, a resource is making the DNS lookup. It's trying to, to take the DNS. Then it's establishing a connection to the server. After that, if it's HTTPS, please make the things HTTPS, uh, it's making the SSL negotiation. After that, the logic that we have in the web server is happening. So the, the, the backend code is, is the time that it's taking. And after that, the content is downloaded. So it's typically what is happening with the, each resource. And after that, it's, uh, this resource contains JavaScript. A person times something here that is, I'm executing JavaScript right now. This is small thing, yeah? <clears throat> also, it's interesting to know how the browser is um, it's uh, uh, making the, the CPU utilization. What is happening inside the browser? No? At the end, browser is like a mini operating system, let me say that has his own CPU or utilization, has his own bandwidth, 
and also has a main thread. Sometimes only one. You know. So with that steps, we can see a lot of things that are happening. For example, here, we are executing a lot of JavaScript. So the, the CPU utilization is really high. But meanwhile, I'm executing that JavaScript. The, the bandwidth is not loading anything. We cannot do anything else. But the main thread is on top. So why we are not making any donut here or because the page is blocked? Because we are executing a lot of JavaScript. The, also with the, the, the chunks or that figures, we can <coughs> extract conclusions. Also, super important. Sometimes we are saying my page is, uh, it has a size of two megabytes, one megabyte. But not all bytes are equal. So if you have uh, JavaScript, that the same uh, amount of k, uh, kilobytes of a JavaScript is not the same of about kilobytes of uh, an image. Why? Because as a the loading, it's exactly the same. But JavaScript needs to be parsed. JavaScript needs to be executed. Meanwhile, JPEG is downloading and showing. The, it's quite easy. It's taking less time. Uh, parsing two seconds, execution one and a half, appearing less than 100 milliseconds, and everything is done. So take it into account. OK, let's talk about the strategies to improve the performance. First of all, it is how normally I am trying to apply the test strategies. First of all, I'm taking a measure. With that measure, I am monitoring that and taking conclusions. With that conclusion, I uh, uh, adjust my only change. One change only at the same time. <coughs> With that change, I'm going to measure again and take conclusions again. If we are making more than one experiment or adjusting, if you are not completely sure that it will have any gain in our website performance, we are not able to determine what is the gain of each thing or if something has a gain, another thing that we implemented is reducing the gain to nothing. So I recommend if you have time, make one by one. Also at the beginning, if you have no experience with that, so it's recommended. First of all, of uh, strategies. It is quite, <laughs> quite uh, easy. Um, change your web hosting service. So you, if you have a web hosting service that it's not fast, it will be super slow. It will be, uh, it will take a lot of time. So it's affecting to here. You remember the waterfall? Here we have initial connection and the time to the first byte. It could be because the code is running quite, it's not okay. But the initial connection, uh, it is saying to you that something wrong is happening with the server. So change that. Now we have Azure, we have um, uh, Amazon One, and here we can select the type of uh, resources and also the, the powerful that you have in that uh, web hosting. It's up to you. But if you want a, web, a, a, a gaining of performance, sometimes it's better to have a good web hosting. Then I will explain you some strategies to load resources or preload or whatever. Here is the preload. Preload is something that you can use to make that. So here, yep, here we have a resource that is loading, is a phone that is loading in, I know, in the 10 position, probably, because the CSS was triggering that. But sometimes you, you can be completely sure that this phone will be loaded, and it is not blocking anything. So maybe you can preload that, and it will be loaded at the second position. So that then, when it will be needed to be loaded by the CSS, we will be there, uh, the, the, the phone, Already then, already downloaded and already parsed. The strategy that sometimes is working fine. Prefetch. Prefetch, it's something that you can use to prefetch where uh, content that you will to use after that. For example, if you want to use that HTML after that, or here an image, uh, maybe as a lazy loading, for example, or another, also in another, another uh, web uh, page, yeah? doesn't matter, you can start downloading that. You can say prefetch, it will be downloaded, it will be cached, if you have the cache already configured, and then in the other websites, in the other, sorry, in the other site, uh, pages, will be already loaded. Maybe in the main page it's not needed, but in the search, in the product page, maybe then, yes. So it's something that you can use to perfect the kind of things in the pages that maybe you have less content to prevent that. 
uh, DNS per fetch. Um, for example, when you are using several domains, something that is happening is that the first time it is connected to that uh, domain, that domain should make the DNS, uh, uh, the DNS uh, identification, no? So the first time is making that time, is, is uh, wasting the time saying, okay, that is my DNS, please give me your server, etc. cetera. No? We can make that a single domain. It's like the, you can put the DNS per fetch. Here, you can see that resource, I think it's that, yes? And that resource has the DNS per fetch here, so it's taking some time to start downloading and processing. But here we said, okay, we are adding the DNS per fetch in that uh, URL, that domain, so the per fetch is coupling there. And when the file is requested, it's already going to the connection. So we are saving some milliseconds on time. Pre-connect. Pre-connect is quite similar to prefetch, but it's making more things. Not only the DNS thing, also the TCP and the, and the SSL. So here we have an example. This uh, chart has loaded something here, but we made the pre-connection and it's making all the connections here. We need to be completely sure that this file will be loaded because uh, then we are wasting our time and also the main thread of the browser. But if you are completely sure, well, you reduce the time of the of loading of that web page about six milli, six hundred milliseconds, only making that action. And then pre-rendering. When we are completely sure that the next web uh, next page that we're going to visit will be one, we can. Uh, load asynchronously the content to have everything already uh, cached when we visit that page. Everything. So here we are loading the first page, blah, 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 blah. and here we started to load to load the new page. For example, if we are in the home page, and then we are going to a search page, and we are completely sure that 90% of the people is going to the search page. So maybe home page has not all the logic, JavaScript, etc., that is needed for that page. We can make a pre render. Uh, in background, we are downloading everything, and then when, when we are going to the search page, everything is there. So it's super easy to move it to the new page. <clears throat> then, more strategies. Optimize the images. I will not talk how optimize the images, because <laughs> it's more than three hours probably to talk about that. I would say only that please take into account size, take into account quality, and take into account the uh, format that you choose. Uh, the NOF size, the NOF quality, and the correct uh, um, format. So making that, we can save that time to download, to download the image. So that image is taking a lot of time to be downloaded, maybe because the format is not the correct one, or maybe because the image is quite big. So maybe we can reduce that without uh, also reducing the quality sometimes, but the, the final customer will not see that. Probably we don't want that the customer will print a poster with that image, no? so then take it into account. More things that we need to do with images is that, okay, we have a lot of images, but if we are loading only the images that are shown, okay, we are reducing uh, the, the size of the rest of the images that are not being not downloaded or not, uh, not visible. And if the user is not going there, that image will be never downloaded. So we are saving time as well. Here you can see that. Eh? First load it, and the rest is happening when we just scroll, scroll down. So. Then this is quite difficult with uh, some projects because it's, they are really old. But move to J from jQuery to ECMAScript 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't know what is the version that is right now. Uh, it's quite interesting for two reasons. jQuery is taking a big size. But also, the parse time and execution time it is taking, it's going to, it's rising to up all the, the, the browser CPU. Man, when jQuery is being parsed, everything is blocked. With ECMAScript 6 or 7 or the version that you prefer, it's everything more stable. So we are thinking about the CPU utilization. We, we are thinking about the main thread making that action. And also maybe all the code that we have will be more comfortable for us. Eh? Sometimes we have not the opportunity to move to ECMAScript 6 because we are working with a, a browser matrix compatibility that is not uh, okay or it's really old. So in that situation, Babel plugin, just an example, eh? it's giving to us the possibility to move to ECMAScript 5 translation. We can work and develop with a newer or the more uh, modern uh, uh, JavaScripts or ECMAScripts 
and then it is making the task for us to transpile and move to MS2 file. So it's something, if we are not making that, it's because we don't want sometimes. Okay, cash policy. That's a sentence that sometimes I say that everything, every resource is static till it changes. So if a resource is changing every two seconds, during two seconds, it's, it's cacheable, it's static, right? So it's a sentence that sometimes could be really high, but as a recommendation, forget that, because uh, I start for the easiest part, and the easiest part is cache uh, at the beginning only the static resources, phones, images, media, media files, scripts, or the style sheet. And only, please, <laughs> when the, the status code is okay. If you are caching <laughs> something that when it's wrong, then you have this something wrong every every time. The TTR recommendation, if everything is okay, you can put a year, because then you, you will change something. But if you make that, please use a hash. If not, you will cache for one year the resources in the browser of your of your customers, and then it will be impossible to invalidate that cache. So only changing the name, of course. But. Okay, it is more or less what we want to achieve. Huh? We have resources, we have something that is coming from the cache. So we want to achieve that. And how? Creating the cache control header. And how we are creating that cache control header here, uh, or how it is effective? It is the first render page. We are uh, uh, caching some resources. And here is when the, the resources are already cached. So the time is more or less one second and six more or less. And here is less than one second. We are saving a lot of time when the resources are, are cached. So make that. How? Common properties that uh, the cache control has. Minus H is the amount of time in, millisecond, in seconds. Sorry. No cache. No cache not means no cache. means that the, the, the web server decides when it's needed to be cached. No store. No, of course, it isn't the real no cache that maybe it's more common for us. And then public and private. Public is when you have any layer between your web browser, your web server, and the, the final browser, and you want that will be also cached in that intermediate layer. For example, a CDN. Private is only caching in the web browser and also in the website. Okay. Um, here it's just an example eh, of code. It's a C sharp because I'm more, more confident with C sharp. But it's a piece of code that it's working. It's making some cache. Uh, my recommendation, try to have a unique place to have everything, the, the caching logic. If you have, for example, a CDN, put everything in the CDN. If you have a web server that is the main entry point, you put everything there. If not, it's a chaos. More things. There are extra properties, uh, new properties, new headers that also could be interesting. It's expires, attack, and body. Uh, expires has a, a fixed date. Attack it's, identifies what is the web server that uh, provides you the, the, the result. And body, it's something that you can see except for encoding that, etc. So it's something that you can take into account. More things. Minify and obfuscate. It's quite easy because right now I think everybody is making that. But uh, it's obvious. But if you have that CSS or that JavaScript and you're minifying that, you have less content. So we are reducing the size of the files. If we are reducing the size of the files, maybe, maybe we can combine that files and have less reduce the number of requests. Sometimes we're not interested to, resource the, the, to reduce the number of requests, but we can do it. And also for security, it's security. Let me say, if we are obfuscating that, it's less readable, no? How to obfuscate that? Uh, I normally work with uh, Webpack, and I pasted some codes here with Webpack, and with that plugins. There, is a lot, there are a lot of plugins that are making the same job. Choose the one that you prefer, it's just an example, okay? Here is the TSS one, mini TSS stash plugin. It's making the task for TSS, it's minifying that. And Aglify Webpack plugin is for JavaScript. It's making the same. So, but uh, at the end, if you look for documentation for both, you'll see a lot of them. More things to take into account. TSS specific specificity. I'm not uh, the best guy to talk about TSS, probably. But uh, this is the basis, more or less. With specificity, depending on the level of the rules, you have more specificity or less. So elements, classes, IDs, and inline. So if you have uh, something with a more specificity that is applying to the same object, the HTML, the browser will apply that style instead of the others. So here we have an example. The ID nav or uh, the class nav, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So the pr probably will apply the, the, the ID 1. No? We need to prevent these kind of things 
to, to have really big uh, CSS specificity at the beginning, uh, on the beginning of the layers, let me say. We need to achieve some CSS with that chart because every means that every uh, single component will be able to take that object and override the rules that are interesting. If the specificity is really, really high, means that the, the, the widget should put, put more specificity and will be higher. And what is the, how it is affect the browser? It's repainting every time. It's repainting, repainting, repainting. It means that the CPU utilization is high and we are making less things. Also, please don't use important a lot and important goals. I think it's obvious, so, but I need to say that. To achieve that, I said that I'm not a crack about CSS, but to achieve that, there is uh, some recommendations like define an architecture. I think CSS is just an example. Or, or use, for example, BAM, uh, that is uh, something like we can help you to um, put names in your uh, rules. With that uh, inverted triangle, you can see that the settings, the tools, settings, we have a lot of settings with less specificity. And then it's with each layer, we have more specificity. So we are overwriting or using the previous layers. So I recommend to, if you are interested in that, to, to read about um, architecture things. CSS. OK, more, more things. When we are developing, we have a lot of files, distributed files. It's easy, because then we have smaller files, and it's better for us as a developers. But, but when we want to go to production with only one bundle, it's enough. Then Webpack is helping to us with that. So here we have an example. We have several files of uh, bundles. We are moving to only one file, or only one bundle, and we are putting that bundle in the CSS. How, create, how we need to create the bundle? I know, if you know the strategy, but type of page, common functionalities, I don't know. Choose the one that you prefer. But if something is not used, remove it. The time that you put that here, but the browser should, should parse it, should apply it, should execute it. So we are saying to the browser that needs to do more things that are not used. So please, not use, not remove the things that are not used. This is the example of bundles for CSS. We have several CSS files. We are creating the, the CSS uh, file as well. And also, we have a not user one. So also, we need to remove it. Remove it. And also, the, the code to create the bundles is exactly the same. Type of page, form of functionalities, it's up to you guys. Uh, sorry, if, if we use one library like uh, Bootstrap, for example, we have to import the Bootstrap. I recommend you use Booster. Ah, <laughs> so, yeah. so in that kind of, if you use uh, IT, CSS, and these kind of things, finally, it's because you are creating your own, uh, let me say, Bootstrap, no? your own uh, platform. So it's easy to have this inverted triangle. If you are using Bootstrap, you are, you are married with uh, that part, so it's impossible to get that. Mm. But uh, maybe Booster, uh, Webpack can help you. Because it's making some magic sometimes that. Uh, yeah. Maybe also with Bootstrap, it's uh, able to make that. Talking about Webpack, there is code splitting, a split chunks plugin. That here we have the, the yellow one, it's a bundle.js. It's only one bundle, everything there. But maybe we want to split in several files because everything is not used in the same page. So, code splitting uh, plugin, uh, split chunks plugin, sorry, in the Webpack is making that much good. So he's detecting what is used for anything, and he's creating different uh, bundles for us. And we can decide the, the threshold, more or less, but it's something that you can use and it's really useful. Then, it is something good that the Webpack uh, is also providing, that is the lazy loading for JavaScript. Imagine that we are loading all the JavaScript that we need, the, the basic one, right? But when we click a button, something needs to be done. Here we have two examples. The lazy loaded and the non lazy loaded is making the same, the button. But here, when this is the not lazy, when we click the, the button, it's showing the alert. Right? It's the typical thing that we are making, right? But here, when we click the button, the, when we, we click the button, we're importing the file and then is executing the alert. So this is whole JavaScript has been loaded in the beginning. It's only the loading by demand, let me say, on demand. So, uh, of course, a JavaScript is, take, is one megabyte of uh, JavaScript. It will take a lot of time. Maybe the experience will be not good, so try to keep 
இப்ப பாலன் சொல்றாங்க ஓகே ஐ செட் ட்வைஸ் ஓர் ஃப்ரீ டைம்ஸ் ஐ நோ தட் நோட் யூ ரிமூவ் தி திங்ஸ் தட் ஆர் நோட் யூஸ் அ டூல் தட் கேன் ஹெல்ப் யூ இஸ் ஆல்சோ க்ரோம் க்ரோம் ஹஸ் திஸ் கோவரேஜ் டாப் தட் இஸ் ப்ரொவைடிங் டு யூ ஆல் தி பீசஸ் ஆஃப் கோட் தட் ஸ்டீம்ஸ் தட் இஸ் ஆர் நோட் யூஸ் ஸோ இட்ஸ் அ வெல் இண்டிகேட்டர் தட் யூ ஹேவ் அ கோட் தட் ஆர் நோட் யூஸ் தட் யூ ஹேஸ் டு ரிமூவ் இட் ஆர் நோட் and about bundles the last it's or bundles and diet the first thing is three shaking three shaking is something that webpack has so two properties that if i'm not wrong the new versions of webpack has uh, by default that is uh, site effix and user export that is making some magic that is reducing it's interpreting all the javascript that you have and it's removing everything that is not using magically yeah. both are working in parallel let me say in different stages but both are working fine if you realize that uh, something is wrong there is removing something that uh, is needed for you you can enable it again of course yeah? then webpack is also uh, providing to you some plugins like aglify js plugin that is the one that we already discussed it about aglify of javascript loading options plugin is uh, only for the this is uh, minify and also obfuscate this is minify javascript please when you <laughs> transpile with webpack set production only setting production Uh, ready is making more things that in development uh, more thing scope hosting scope hosting is something that if you have some code that is only use it in a function and is only used in one place it's reducing the code that we have there inside that place so it's reducing the 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 common function blah 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 we are reducing things extract uh, text plugin it's more for css and the split chunks that is the one that we already discussed more things compression if we have a file in server that it's really big and we want to provide that file to the to the web uh, browser then we need to download that file something that we can do is make a zip no and provide that file already compressed okay it is possible with all the uh, text ones not with all the files for example images are binaries are already compressed by the format that you are using don't use it because you are compressing twice um wolf 2 as a font it's also already compressed but for the files for the json files for the html for the css for the javascript you can apply that probably you know jzip is a typical one we are making that there eh? and here maybe it's impossible to read but here is the file that is taking uh up it's uh, about 200 kilobytes and then jzip it is uh, less than 50 kilobytes so we are reducing a lot of the the amount so we are reducing the time of the load here a comparison about different types of uh, compression the, the most common ones eh? we have broadly bzip2 jzip and x uh, xz first chart is about the compression ratio so it's the time that uh, is the time so the less is better is um, how we are uh, compressing the files seems that broadly is the one the, the red one is broadly is the one that is compressing more it is the time the second one is the time that takes to compress so broadly is take a lot of time and gzip is the faster no it's the blue one and then the compress time this is time on on web uh, on browser huh? uh, browser is uh, taking uh, more or less broadly and gzip is quite similar now do you remember the the file the checklist that the the new gurus of uh, web performance sign up they say that new, we need to use broadly why it's super high how we can prevent that cache it pre cache it and then the rest of the people will have already cached that file and will not need to be applied uh, compress it again oh sorry okay how in our completion here's a piece of code it's uh, with the sharp don't get for it um that it's quite easy but the at the end it's the same that they set for the cache things keep that kind of thing in a unique place if you have a cdn if you have a gateway in the middle if you have something else in a, in a unique place if not is a mess okay where and how to load the css and javascript typically it said that here's the top and there's the bottom it is still okay but if we are making that we can suffer from that it is how is loaded for example like javascript eh? HTML is parsing arrive to the javascript the javascript stops the html starting to fetch or download the javascript 
is executing the JavaScript, and then, hey, it's email, you can continue. We are blogging here. We are doing anything else. So there is a strategies that are fixing that. Uh, async is something that is helping us. So the HTML is happening. Meanwhile, I detect that. Fetch is making in parallel, let me say, fetch of the file. And when it needs to be executed, then yes, it is blocking a bit. But less than the first time. Huh? Then we have defer. Defer, it's HTML parsing. The script is, uh, the JavaScript is fetching. And when the HTML is, is already parsed, then starts to execute the JavaScript. The, the biggest difference that we have in the async and defer, except the, the chart, more or less, is because the defer keeps the order of the files, and async not. Why? When HTML is parsing, and this is fetching, maybe you are fetching twice files at the same moment. And if the second one is slower, or is shorter than the first one, it's fetched, fetched first. Then it's executed first. So it's the first that arrived, the first that is executed. So if you have some orders in your JavaScript, maybe I think it's not your best idea. Okay, here, unload event. Unload event is something that, the typical thing, no? Everything that is not needed for my website, unload event. Nice, here we are using that to put, for example, the, the, um, the, the social network. Our website is working, but sometimes we are using some buttons to share in the social network. It's useful for the user. Yes, it's useful, but not in my, my content. So maybe it's happening in another phase when the user can already click every, everywhere. It's nice, so we can put it here. Sometimes the people is making the same for APIs. It's okay, maybe the, the site is already viewable. You can click in the place that, that you prefer and some piece of code is loading by APIs, a single thing. Okay, it's okay. You use that all load because with all load, with that line, the site, it's clickable, the site is live. After that, it's well, not doing anything else. So here left the Google Tag Manager. I don't know if you work with Google Tag Manager, but it is using icing, it is loaded as a header, it is blocking. So it is blocking. And yeah, Google says, no, it's not blocking a lot. Yeah, it is blocking. And also it's loading a lot of content inside. And if that content is executed, when Google Tag Manager is executing, we are creating a lot of stuff in our waterfall before the stuff that is really important for us. That it's uh, the, our JavaScript, our images, our content, right? One strategy that you can use is, here it's in bold more or less, but uh, make loader that Google Tag Manager on load. If you, are load, if you are using Google Tag Manager to track things, to load uh, any other pixels, etc., you can put on load. It isn't load, but what happens if you use using load? If you are using optimizer or A-B testing for Google Tag Manager, then you will have a, a flash thing, flash situation that is when, for example, the A-B testing, that button is green, eh? but as A-B testing, I will paint as red. Then it will be loaded, the button will be green, and whoops, then it's, then it's red. It is not nice, so if you want to use that, maybe that strategy is not okay. But I recommend to use that because normally it's because you're using that uh, functionality. Then what happens is that we have our own content and all the tracking things and maybe the, the, the APIs that we put in, on, uh, on, on load. So this Google Magic can load a lot of things that maybe in, are not in the control of the developer because sometimes it's not the department, right? So we cannot take control of that. We can push the department to produce the thing, but if we have no control of that and these external things, put it on load. But if everything is on load, we have an unload mess. Uh, okay, it's what I said before. Eh? Make a preview of the things that you want to load on load. If you have own content on load, maybe one option could be define events. That that events will be the ones that will be happening before. And is on load, you have an event that is loading first your own content, and then another the track things, and then the other the, the rest. It's a strategy. There are a lot, but uh, if you are going to unload everything, you have a mess. It's clear. Okay, let's move to tools. We have a big amount of tools. Like uh, New Relic, uh, Lighthouse, web page test, etc. And thousands more. Yes. But now we will talk about the tool that is magically fixing everything. It's really nice, the tool, but it doesn't exist. Okay, <laughs> at the end, the tool is uh, 
doesn't exist. It's not a tool for everything. So we need to fix, we need to answer three questions. The first question is, what information do you want to extract from that tool? The second, when do you want to, that information? And the third one, in what level do you want that information? If you are able to respond to that question in your situation, probably you will have cases like that. If I want to make a snapshot, then maybe web page test is my favorite one. Uh, it's the it's your your solution because if you have a waterfall, you have some tips, etc. Maybe like house as well. Maybe both because they are it is used for the snapshot. Uh, a snapshot of poor moon. If I'm developing, maybe my tool is webpack. Uh, I shown you everything. Uh, in my examples with Webpack, so uh, probably is a uh, good option. Some time ago, the people were using uh, Grand or Globe or something like that. Now, since the Webpack is uh, rocks, well, and also there is Webpack visualizers that are showing to you the bundles how they are distributed. It's more than here you have, uh, but we have how uh, several ways to show what is the content that uh, any uh, bundle has. If you are a nerd of the TCP connections, maybe your tool is Wireshark. With Wireshark, I remember, uh, let me explain you a history that is happening to me. When we moved to ATV2, that supposed to be faster, the page was taking a lot of time. Was it slower? I said, why? What is slower? And using Wireshark, I realized it, that something was wrong in our um, connections, and the TCP packages are duplicated all the time. They are cancelled and duplicating, cancelled and duplication. So that's the reason why something was working not okay, but the problem was not in ATP2, was not in the web, uh, in the code, was in, was in the server. So maybe it could be something interesting to see. The, with Webpack, you can extract TCP something, TCP trace, something like that, that it's a file that you can load with Wireshark to see that. It's, it's a tip. If you want to monitor things, New Relic or Google Analytics could be your tool. Both as well, because maybe you are using Google Analytics for another thing, not just for, for, for performance. And New Relic as well. So uh, New Relic has an extra plugins to track the JavaScript errors. That also is interesting to know. Well, both are okay. Maybe there are more, but it's solving that. If you want a general rep report uh, against your competitors, Google has a web page that you can use to compare how your website is loaded with a 4G connection in the United States or in Spain or wherever you want. And also, you can type your competitors here and see how faster is working your website. And also, there is another thing that you didn't put here, that you can say what is the, the quantity of money that we are receiving in, in, in a year, and if we improve 10, 100 milliseconds, what is the new conversion that we will have? It's just, well, it's not a mathematical thing, but it's based on the studies that we have. And this is the extra because it's the net situation. Eh? Imagine that you want to touch Docker with Kubernetes, with Grafana. Grafana is to show the nice dashboards. Uh, site Spit.io is used with WebPage Test or no to run a snapshots or your, of your images, giving some tips as well. And you can move that information to that dashboard. <coughs> with Kubernetes and Docker, you can make a lot of calls every five minutes, for example. And you can create that kind of dashboard. It's interesting, it's okay. I never saw that in production, honestly, but if you want to play a bit, a bit it's nice. Okay, flash tips to finalize the session. Use HTTP2, or even better, HTTP3. It's not uh, official, there is HTTP2 with a quick, I think it's uh, called, but seems that everything is moving to that. Use that. Use a CDN, and please, the CDN should be compatible with HTTP2 or HTTP3 as well. Uh, and sometimes that CDN is giving to you also the opportunity to make the optimization uh, um, files or images optimization by default. There are some of them. Okay, it's up to you. Use the most optimized phone. For example, Wolf 2. Right, right now I think it's Wolf 2. Uh, if you can use the most optimized phones, most optimized um, types of resources, your browser will go faster. But please keep into account that not all the browsers are loading or uh, compatible with that. Uh, there is a page called uh, Can I Use that probably you know that it's uh, giving you the matrix compatibility of each browser. Uh, good forwards for the rest of the page. 
icons to prevent to use images. Uh, yeah, uh, you have a lot of images like icons, like a uh, profile thing, no? It's a small one that normally has some transparencies, etc. Maybe it's better to, to load only one font with all the small images. It's only one resource loaded and so on. Service workers, it's quite different. So service workers can be used to store the complete website in your browser as a file. It's not a completely cache because cache at the end, cache part is making a short connection to the file to be sure that it's still there. Service workers is, I don't load the, the site, I put the site in my browser and if I keep the connection, I can run the site. So it's something interesting, also allows push notifications. It's uh, interesting. Ooh. Okay, uh, accelerated mobile pages. It is using the cache of the CDN of Google. It's recommended for news, it's recommended for, uh, for blogs, for example, if, if you have a blog with uh, some entries. Um, it is using that for mobile because they say that mobile is not the, the, the well, the mobile first is not well applied apply it to some websites and they move that if everything is done and if uh, they are using that the the mobile is run it's loading faster the website and also in mobile sometimes you can see in the google search the small images on top with some video it's that part you can see in the in the google search some like a lining next to is that and above the fault optimization. Above the fault is at the end. Your page is like, like something like that. But the browser, when it runs the website, is seeing only that part. For the customer, the site is loaded when the part that is visible is done. But if the rest is not done, that's your problem, not the problem of the customer. So you can prioritize all the content of the, the top part of the web page. And then you will give to the to the customer the a false uh, perception about your web, your website, but then you can load the rest on background. So it's like a presentation, the kind of thing. Yeah? And that's it. Everything is done. Uh, if you have any questions about that explanation, hey, yes. Uh, what about the um, server side rendering? Improve something in the application because uh, if we uh, make all the, the processes of JavaScript in, in server side rendering and just send to the browser. You mean that you have a website no? that uses JavaScript to run, to create a, a plain HTML, right? Yeah. We are making a server, yeah. and then we are moving that to, uh, I don't know, to a CDN, for example. Yeah. So normally, yes. If the server side rendering, it's happening offline, let me say. It's something that when we are deploying the website, we are preparing everything, mm -hmm. and we are uploading to uh, HTML, and then the time to first byte or the first uh, interaction with the, the website will be nothing. It's improving a lot, that, that kind of thing, because we have no, uh, we have not uh, backend code there. It's already processed. Mm -hmm. But it's something that only recommends if the page is static completely, or if you have a single page application, where um, at the end the content is shown because you are making some API calls and then rendering in that way. I, I made a project some time ago uh, for uh, Tomorrowland that we are using that approach more or less yeah. and it's working really fine. Yep, yeah, awesome talk by the way, thanks a lot. Um, my question would be if I have like minified JavaScript files at the bottom, does it make sense to like bundle them all together because uh, if if somebody's using HTTP2, mm -hmm. shouldn't they, it's so synchronously load each and every file? Shouldn't be that faster than yeah. having one big bundle file? Yeah, uh, with HTTP1, makes sense to create bundles. The <coughs> less requests and as the less requests is, is better, right? Mm -hmm. With HTTP2, the rules are changing. The, the rules are completely different. Mm -hmm. So let's create several files. It's okay because then we are with that several files with only one connection open. It's the browser is processing them faster. So depending on the strategy that you are using. Okay, so I'm I have no idea. But like I'm deciding which HTTP version I'm using. Uh, if you are using HTTP2, it's recommended. If you are using HTTP1, okay. then uh, I don't recommend to make that because then uh, when a file is uh, executing, the, the rest are, are waiting. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I have a 
question about the pre-render. You, you saw uh, an example about uh, pre-render earlier. Yeah. Start. Yeah, it was the start. This, this one, huh? This one. What? Oh, okay. Is this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Is this one? Is this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, is there a way to render the, the links, like depending on the most usage? Yeah, it's up to you. It's up to you. So you can make it statically or you can make it dynamically. Imagine that uh, I didn't make that there, but uh, I imagine something like uh, uh, backend code that is going to Google Analytics is deciding what is the most common page that we, the, some customers are going and then make it dynamically. It's just an idea. Eh? Maybe it's not working, but it's uh, just an idea. But it could be dynamically, of course. I have a question about the scripts. Mm -hmm. You talk about using script async or infer. Yeah. I've seen another approach in the Next.js framework. Uh, maybe not the one you use React. But that framework is putting scripts at the head with the preload tab and at the end of the body with a normal script. How would that affect like, the, the waterfall? So at the end, uh, when we are making something in preload, is fetching the file but not executing that. It's not parsing that. So what we are reducing is the the time of uh, of uh, fetching the file. It's like if you have the the, fi the file cache. Mm -hmm. So you are downloading that, you are storing in cache, and then when it's needed to be executed or when it's arriving to the bottom, then is starting parsing that. So again, it's splitting a bit uh, the situation. else? No? So, thank you very much to Ten and thank you Ernie again to No, ahora van a venir pizzas. No vayáis, eh, que me las como todas yo. Y vais ahí a la cocina y bueno, a no, vaya a la cocina.